Exactly two years ago today, El Salvador became the first country to make Bitcoin legal tender. And in the past 720 days, the entire world has been talking about El Salvador. We in the United States need to follow the lead of the government of El Salvador. This week, President Bukele doubling down on his effort. I wonder why other heads of state aren't calling you for advice on how to do it in their country. Despite all of this attention and talks around in El Salvador, nobody can agree on what's happening there. Has Bitcoin failed? Has Bitcoin succeeded? Is El Salvador going to default on its debt? And is it still the world's most dangerous country? I actually left my home country of Australia to move to El Salvador for six months to find out the truth for myself. So let's start breaking down what is actually happening in El Salvador. Now, the first thing that a Bitcoiner is going to ask me in regards to my time in El Salvador is... What's the adoption like, Luke? And my answer to that question is always, it depends. For me personally, I was able to spend Bitcoin on more than 500 occasions in my six month stay in El Salvador. That's right, I did the maths. I was spending Bitcoin at least once a day, maybe twice a day on most occasions. But of course, adoption does vary based upon what area of the country you are actually looking at. So for example, adoption in El Zonte, Bitcoin Beach is gonna be very different to the adoption you're going to find in San Salvador. Now we're gonna talk about some of the adventures that I had in El Salvador, trying to orange pill many the Spanish speaking Salvadorians with my limited knowledge of Spanish later on into today's video. I want to first look at some cold hard facts and statistics about the Chivo wallet adoption in El Salvador. So let's take a look at a couple of these studies and surveys looking into that. So Bukele spent over $180 million uh, to give every single El Salvadorian citizen $30 of free Bitcoin if they downloaded the Chivo wallet application. For those who don't know Chivo, wallet is an application that many of the merchants actually use in El Salvador to accept Bitcoin and instantly convert it to US dollars. There is also over 200 different Chivo wallet ATMs spread all across El Salvador. And there's also Chivo ATMs in America as well, because lots of El Salvadorians live in America and they send money home to El Salvador. Okay. So this is a game changer. It has changed many people's lives. And we can see here from a study that 4 million people from El Salvador, actually downloaded this Chivo wallet. So 4 million out of 6 million, that's a pretty good hit rate considering El Salvador is a country that is very poor. But what we can see here is that 6 out of 10 El Salvadorians didn't actually continue using the Chivo wallet after they downloaded that $30 of free Bitcoin. So we can see here from this US centric survey and study uh, that looked at 1800 El Salvadorians, they said that around only 20% of Salvadorians continue to use the Chivo wallet on a daily basis today in 2023. And they tried to say, look, transaction volumes are down 75% since the initial implementation of Bitcoin. So we can see here from this article that uh, in September, when Bitcoin was made legal tender in 2021, there was around 20,000 Lightning Network transactions every single day in El Salvador. And today it's dropped to around 5,000 per day. I think what this article does miss though, is the fact that Bitcoin was in a bull market in 2021. Price was pumping from 30K to 70K. Uh, today we're in the middle of a bear market. So it's not just... Bitcoin volumes and transactions in El Salvador that are down 75%. It's transactions around a lot of the world, okay? The, the hype around Bitcoin has declined. But this same study that tried to dunk on El Salvador for saying only 20% of Salvadorians continue to use the Chivo wallet every day also said that out of the respondents in the survey, 64% of them had access to a smartphone. And before Bukele made Bitcoin legal tender and introduced Chivo Wallet, 70% of these people didn't have a bank account and 90% of them did not use any mobile banking services. So Chivo Wallet has made a difference here. Yes, it is a KYC wallet. It is custodial. I understand all of those concerns. It is very different to a private Bitcoin wallet where you hold your own private keys, uh, but it has made a difference. So that's a little bit about the Chivo wallet statistics. What did I find when I was in El Salvador? Well, I actually spent Bitcoin over 500 times in my six month stay in El Salvador. That's right. I spent Bitcoin every single day, sometimes twice a day, and you can actually spend it everywhere you want to go, all the major coffee shops like Starbucks, 
all your major franchises, all your fast food restaurants, but more importantly, all the grocery stores actually accept Bitcoin. So their supermarket chain is called Super Selectos and they all have Bitcoin uh, integrated uh, with their payment terminals. So as a Bitcoiner, it was amazing. It was like living in a Bitcoin country. 99% uh, of my transactions were done using Bitcoin. And many people ask me, okay, what's the difference in adoption rates? Well, I found that in the city, San Salvador, that's the major city where most of the action happens in El Salvador. Uh, they have a population of over half a million people. I thought adoption was somewhere around five to 15% of citizens were using the Chivo wallet actively. That kind of lines up with the study we just looked at from the US that said around 20% of people have continued using the Chivo wallet. And that same study also found that 20% of merchants uh, were actually accepting Bitcoin at their stores. Um, so I thought in the city, it was 5 to 15%. But if you go to somewhere like El Zonte, like Bitcoin Beach, adoption is a little bit higher in my opinion. I think it's more between you know 15 to 25%. So a big increase from what you would see in the city. And that makes sense. And then of course, there's special occasions like the one-year Bitcoin legal tender anniversary party that went down on September 7th, 2022. Adoption at that party was probably like 80 to 90%. Okay. There was a heap of Bitcoiners there. I had a blast meeting them all. And I reckon 80 to 90% of people were using Bitcoin to pay for their drinks and food, which was amazing. And something else that's really interesting in El Salvador is it's so much easier to orange pool people on Bitcoin in this country, okay? I've lived in Australia for 25 years, lived in America for six months. I've traveled across Latin America to a number of different countries like Peru, Mexico, Colombia, El Salvador. I've been to a few different places and El Salvador is the easiest place to orange pill a new person on Bitcoin, okay? They're just more aware of what is going on in the world and they're more comfortable with an alternative form of money, okay? I was even able to actually pay a portion of my rent uh, for a little shack that I rented in El Zonte uh, with Bitcoin, okay? I convinced the landlords to accept a little bit of Bitcoin. And a little tip and a trick that I use in El Zonte or El Salvador in general is whenever I give a tip to somebody at a restaurant for goods and services, I will always make them accept Bitcoin for the tip. I'll say, sorry, I don't have any of the fake dollars. I can't tip you with that. But if you download a Bitcoin wallet, I can send you some Bitcoin. So naturally that gets people interested and uh, when you actually see Bitcoin work in real time, I think that's a really good orange pilling opportunity because people don't realize just how quickly you can make a Bitcoin transaction without a financial intermediary in the middle of that transaction rent seeking. And of course, El Salvador has the amazing Hope House project that is going on in El Salvador that is aiming to rescue local kids from going into the gangs and actually putting them on a good path for the future. So Hope House is really cool. You can actually uh, buy some cool Bitcoin merchandise in here, as you can see. I got myself a couple of newspapers. Actually, I have a little bit of memorabilia here with me. That is the uh, newspaper, the day that Bitcoin was made legal tender. So I had to get a couple of those puppies, but it's really amazing what they're doing in Hope House and in El Salvador. Something else that's really cool happening in the country is there is a company called My First Bitcoin currently being run by Jonathan. And they're actually going out there to local schools, educating people on Bitcoin. Okay. So in El Salvador, when you're, I think, 16 years old, you get the option to do diplomas in lots of different things and fields. Like for example, you could be doing a construction diploma, fashion designing diploma, etc. You guys get the idea. But now in El Salvador, you have the option to do a Bitcoin diploma. So that is where you get to do, I think it's an eight week course, learning about Bitcoin from the amazing team of people at My First Bitcoin. So My First Bitcoin is doing some great work with Bitcoin adoption in El Salvador. And at the end of the student's eight week course uh, in their Bitcoin diploma, on their graduation, day, they have to go through a little bit of a practical exam before they get signed off and get the pass uh, for their eight-week Bitcoin diploma. And what My First Bitcoin is doing is on that graduation day, what they do is they try to fly as many Bitcoiners from around the world to El Salvador to actually help out with that verification process that takes place in the student's practical part of their eight-week Bitcoin diploma. And I was actually lucky enough to help out with one of these graduations in September 2020. Uh, there was around 60 students who graduated from the Pacheco High School in El Salvador. I got the chance to meet the amazing team from Ibex and My First Bitcoin who helped to fly those 20 or so Bitcoiners from all around the world to El Salvador. And as you can see, each older Bitcoiner actually sat down and tried to 
go through the verification process with a younger Bitcoiner from the school who was trying to pass their exam. And it was an absolute blast. I got the chance to meet some amazing Bitcoiners like Obi, who's working on Fedimint, and of course, Eric Yates, uh, who has written the amazing book, The Seventh Property of Bitcoin. And I was surprised to see Max and Stacy even popped into the graduation ceremony. It was an amazing time. And something else that was really a big surprise about my time in El Salvador was the fact that all the kids wanted to get a photo with my big ugly head. That's right. All of the students there in El Salvador apparently don't see many gringos. So as you can see, all the kids wanted to get a bunch of photos with the older Bitcoiners. It was a little bit unexpected, but it was an absolute ball. It was great getting a chance to meet the next generation of Bitcoiners in El Salvador. The entire day just felt like a massive Bitcoin celebration at the school. The team at Ibex unveiled the How Finney Memorial at the school, and the kids even put on a little cool uh, dance routine for us at the end. And they truly do understand Bitcoin. As part of that graduation process, they actually have to back up a wallet. So they have to write down the 24 word seed phrase. They have to back that up on a different mobile wallet. And if they can do that successfully, they will find some secret Satoshis hidden on that new Bitcoin wallet. So it was really cool. And something else that was a little bit of a surprise is watching how fast my first Bitcoin is actually growing in El Salvador. I believe in the first six months, they might have only taught 30 or 40 kids. Then in the following six months, I think their numbers were up to like 400 people. And in the previous 12 months, I think they taught over 10,000 people about Bitcoin. So that is exponential growth. Now, it's great that we have these companies in El Salvador focusing on adoption, but a lot of people tell me, Luke, I don't understand what is happening with this Bitcoin thing in El Salvador. And a lot of people say that more education needs to be done within the country. And that is true, okay? Bukele has made some attempts to increase the adoption of the country. Uh, you can see here, he did many videos uh, when the legal tender announcement went into place uh, initially in 2021. And the government has even employed thousands of employees to actually stand at each uh, Chivo ATM to help out people with any issues they are having. In. And look, I agree more education needs to be done, but I have a little bit of a controversial opinion. I think Bitcoin is more intuitive than most people believe, okay? I have a little bit of anecdotal evidence. Uh, my bank accounts have all closed, essentially. So I haven't been in Australia in two years. I've been traveling in America, Latin America. Um, I'm in Colombia right now, and I have no bank accounts. So there's no way for me to actually get money in the fiat system. I get paid in Bitcoin, and when I actually need some local fiat here in Colombia, the easiest way for me to actually get my hands on fiat is to send my Bitcoin to my partner's Chivo wallet application. And then she will actually send uh, Bitcoin from her Chivo wallet to her dad's Chivo wallet. And then the dad actually goes to a Chivo wallet ATM, withdraws a little bit of money from the ATM. And then he will take that money from a Chivo wallet ATM and he will go and deposit that physically in my partner's bank account. That sounds like a little bit of a headache, but that is probably the easiest and probably the safest option for us to get our hands on some local fiat. We've sold Bitcoin a couple of times in the pit to peer market. But, you know, as a gringo, that could be slightly sketchy. So we prefer to go the safer route. I know that was a long story, but the point I want to highlight with that story is I don't believe Bitcoin is only for millennials and Gen Xs, okay? I think Bitcoin can also be boomer money, okay? I believe anybody can learn how to use Bitcoin. I mean, obviously, it's going to be harder for some people to learn about Bitcoin, but my partner's father is 58 years old and he has no issues using a Chivo wallet ATM because he's learned how to do it once or twice, okay? I actually think using a Bitcoin wallet is easier than the traditional banking system. I mean, everybody has to go through hoops to set up a bank account. You normally have to actually go into a bank. You have to go for an hour or maybe even a two hour long interview to set up a bank account. You need to read all of this paperwork, which nobody reads. You have to sign away your rights and your freedoms when you sign up for a bank account. And I mean, it's a two hour process. I think if anybody spent two hours learning how to use Bitcoin at a Chivo wallet ATM, they would know how to use a Bitcoin wallet and they would know the basics. Okay, I don't show my private key to somebody. That's very similar to my bank account. I don't tell anybody my four digit pin associated with my credit card. I honestly think the differences between Bitcoin and the traditional legacy system aren't as far apart as many people in the space do claim they are. A little bit of a controversial opinion, but that's my thoughts on that topic. So it is all of these really cool things happening in El Salvador that is bringing expats from around the world 
to live in El Salvador. Okay. I know so many digital nomads in El Salvador. You bump into them all the time and you can see what it has done to El Salvador's economy. We can see that in the following year after Bukele made Bitcoin legal tender, the country's GDP grew by over 10%, which actually puts them in the top 15 or so countries around the world who experienced the best turnaround in their GDP in the year of 2022. We can also see that employment in the country grew by 7%, internal revenue up by 37%, and most importantly, crime and violence fell by over 90 to 95 percent but it's important to remember that all of this amazing growth and improvements we've seen in the country of El Salvador wasn't solely due to Bukele's Bitcoin playbook a lot of this growth can also be attributed to Nayib Bukele's sovereign individual playbook he is not only trying to revolutionize and transform his country in the realm of economics but he's also focusing on many other policies that is bringing these sovereign individuals from all around the world to want to move to El Salvador. So obviously he's opening up the borders, he's scrapping all of the health mandates, and he's also doing things such as squashing the crime. And if you want me to do a whole nother video on those topics, explaining what I found in the country, let me know in the comments down below and I will get to that because I know in this video, we've only really focused on looking at the Bitcoin adoption side of things. So my final thoughts on El Salvador and Bitcoin legal tender, has it failed? No, I don't think Bitcoin legal tender has failed. Some people point to all of these stats and surveys and say, look, only 20% of merchants accept Bitcoin. It's failed. And I just think they're missing the bigger picture. Bitcoin adoption has gone from essentially zero in the country to somewhere around 10 to 20%. Okay, so it is an enormous step to take a country from zero to 10% adoption in only a year or two. So I think it's a positive, And I think before you have a really strong opinion on Bukele's uh, laws that he's implementing, and of course, the Bitcoin adoption in El Salvador, I think you should go there yourself and experience it. It's a safe country. It's a beautiful country beautiful weather year round. Highly suggest you definitely check it out. Now I want to wrap this video up by talking about the most important thing that Bukele has done with announcing Bitcoin being legal tender exactly two years ago. And that is de-risking Bitcoin for nation states. That's right. Bukele has actually started a wave and a trend of other nation states around the world feeling more comfortable to allow some form of Bitcoin legal tender to be implemented in their countries. Okay. So if you actually have a look in 2021, there were zero countries with any form of Bitcoin legal tender within their borders. And then in 2021, we saw one country, of course, El Salvador. But then in 2022, there are nine countries with some form of Bitcoin legal tender implemented within their borders. So the Central Africa Republic became the second country to make Bitcoin outright legal tender. But then you also have all of these smaller countries with smaller projects within their country where Bitcoin is accepted as payment and it is tax-free. So for example, you have Bitcoin Lake in Guatemala, you have Bitcoin Jungle in Costa Rica, you have Bitcoin City in Switzerland, which of course is Luguano. You also have Madeira, which is a little island of around 200,000 people, uh, which of course is in Portugal. And of course, you can also spend Bitcoin in Honduras. And it is really interesting to watch this uh, explosion of Bitcoin being accepted all around the world. I can't imagine Imagine what could potentially happen if we do see another Bitcoin bull market next year after the Bitcoin halving. I think that we are beginning to see the early signs of many other nation states around the world quietly position themselves uh, to actually adopt Bitcoin. And I actually think the biggest areas of adoption are going to actually come from some very unlikely areas that people might not expect it. For example, China banned Bitcoin in 2021. But of course, today, they're the world's second largest Bitcoin miner. And just yesterday, this headline came out saying that Beijing has a Bitcoin and crypto blueprint. And this announcement obviously comes just one week after uh, Bitcoin and crypto was actually allowed to be traded by retail citizens with within Hong Kong. Uh, everybody knows about the connection between Hong Kong and China. And of course, this plot gets even more interesting considering the fact that out of the 10 countries around the world with the highest adoption rates, six of them are found in Southeast Asia. Of course, we're talking about Pakistan, India, the Philippines, Vietnam, Hong Kong, and Thailand. So to me, I think it's very interesting that you have all of these countries plus Bhutan, plus Laos, who are China's two neighbors who are currently mining Bitcoin, all coming out very secretly and quietly and positioning themselves to actually make themselves a friendly Bitcoin country. And in my opinion, 
I believe these are the early signs that, that China could actually be about to admit the fact that they were wrong with their Bitcoin ban in 2021. And they might actually have to use Bitcoin in their plans to de-dollarize their country. I know, I know it sounds a little bit out there and a little bit crazy, but you got to check out the receipts that I bring in two recent videos that I recorded on this topic. You can check those ones out right here. And with all that said, I'll see you guys in another video.